Hello, I'm Helen Colebrook from Journal with Purpose and welcome to part three of my mini Journal of Joy series. Today we're going to finish off decorating our pages. So this is the last time we'll be adding decorations before we turn it into a journal. And I'm going to be using watercolour today. I really liked the thought of having a mixture of different mediums. So we've used acrylic paint with the jelly plate and then we've done mark making with water soluble pencils. So what I'm going to do at this point is look at each of the pages and see if there's anything else I want to add. I'm really happy with the front of this. And the only thing I've got here is I've got a bit of a plain background. I've got blue behind here. And I'm going to be doing just lots of loose, simple, kind of either marks or colour washes, anything like that. I also had a bit of a look through my pages quickly earlier. And one of the colours I've decided I'd like to bring in a little bit more onto my pages is some yellow. To me, that's such a happy colour. So I definitely want to mix up some yellow watercolour paints. I'm using my set from Kurataki Ganzai Tambi, but any kind of watercolours is going to be fine. So for this one, I think I'm just going to put a kind of loose yellow wash around those flowers. I've also added gesso to the back of any pages that are completely plain. So I did that yesterday, so they're nice and dry for today. And now I'm just gonna add that loosely around these because they were done with water soluble pencil. They may be able to activate it, though if it's the ink tents, they should be set. The stabilos I've noticed kind of keep reactivating, but the ink tents, once they've dried, will actually stay in place. But I'm just going to kind of go loosely around these images just to make sure that I'm not kind of smudging anything around too much. So in next week's episode we are going to be binding the journals and right at the end of this video I'm going to talk you through what I will be using uh, just so that you can get things ready in time for putting this journal together. I'm so excited to put these pages together and to see how everybody else's journal looks once it's all assembled. Okay, I love that bright splash of yellow on there. And because these are going to be folded in half, I think it's going to make for just some really interesting pages. So with this next one, I want to do something on the front and the back of here. So I'm going to do the front and I'll put it to one side. So hopefully it's dried by the time we get to the end of this video. If not, I'll give it a quick dry off with my heat tool. And I'm thinking with this one, I'll perhaps mix up this really lovely shade of blue. And I think I might just do some little circles and marks on this side. I had thought about doing a whole colour wash all the way around the leaves but I don't think it's really going to need it so just some little fun kind of circles and marks. Anything which breaks up the background a little bit and my whole aim with this is that it would be something joyful and no pressure just relaxing and a fun way to play with our art supplies without needing any particular kind of result and it's just one of my favorite ways to create okay so nearly there with that one just pop that to one side and hopefully come back to that at the end. I 
Okay. So this one, I don't want to do anything on that side at all. I really like that. This one's got plenty on it too. The only thing I might do is just add some little white splashes. I've got some white acrylic ink here. And I really like using acrylic inks because they're very opaque. So they're gonna show up nicely on top of other mediums. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that. Then my water's kind of got a green color. So I don't want to affect the color too much. Just add some little splashes. But you could do that with any color acrylic paint. It doesn't have to be white acrylic ink. Okay, next we've got my hearts page and I really like how that one is just like that. And I'm really happy with that side too. Uh, that I don't want to add anything to the front, but definitely do on the back. So I think with this one, I might just go for a really nice colour wash across the page. So I'm going to add a bit more yellow in there and also add some orange. I think that'll be a nice kind of cheerful look to the page and these are the pages again where I've gessoed on the back just to try and make sure that it doesn't go through and kind of show on the other page or actually reactivate what's on the other side okay so I'm just going to do big colour washes with this one and any of your pages that are looking a little bit plainer, when it comes to actually using the journal, of course, you can add any decoration as you normally would at that stage. So washi tapes, stickers, your own doodles, anything like that. So you know, don't worry about making all of them too, too pretty at this stage because you're going to be using that journal and no doubt adding things to it anyway. Okay, so I'm going to fill in the gaps with this yellow. Uh, the brush I'm using is an Escoda watercolour br uh, brush. It's from their travel set because the handle kind of comes off and you can put it on the other side to protect the bristles. I never do that when I'm at home. I just leave it to dry naturally without the kind of cap on it, but it is really helpful when we go away. Okay, that's another page done. Okay, I don't want to add anything to that side. Maybe I'll add a little something along here. Might use that blue again. And just add some little stripes coming off the side of the page. And some of these, the what I've used underneath is slightly resisting that paint. That's fine. It gives a little hint of something on there. OK, I think I'm going to leave that side alone. I occasionally just fold them in half and try and imagine how they're going to look. I think that will be fine. And for this, I'm thinking maybe some kind of leaves would be fun or maybe grasses more than leaves. So 
So I'm just going to start at the bottom of the page and just lighten off the pressure as I come upwards. You certainly don't need to do exactly the same as I'm doing at all. Just have fun with whatever kind of decorations you fancy adding. Watercolours is one of my absolute favourite mediums, so I'm really pleased that I'm adding these to my journal as well. I feel that a journal of joy for me would not be complete without plenty of watercolour in here. I also think it's going to be such fun when we're then opening up our journals and working out how we're going to use these pages. But definitely once we've got our journals bound, the week after that, I would do some journaling and perhaps get some pages ready in advance and get some ideas for how I, from how I'm using mine. OK, that page, I don't need to add anything there. For this one, I might add some really simple flowers. In fact, I might just do these as circles for now. And I'll perhaps then get this one dried off quickly so I can show you what I'm going to do with these. I'm going to add some smaller orange ones as well. OK, I'm going to get that one just dried off really quickly. Well, I did have some questions about what um, I use for drying off. You could use a hairdryer would be absolutely fine. Um, I use this heat tool. I bought it from Amazon some years ago now and it seems to still be working absolutely fine. OK, this is now dry-ish. I'm just going to add some simple stems and some leaves and then with the orange ones I think I'll just have those coming off the stems of the big flowers and I'm using a Staedtler pigment liner for this. I really enjoy doing anything that's kind of quite fun and whimsical. I've been tagged in some more of the photos on Instagram of kind of jelly plate prints and mark making. Just absolutely wonderful to see. Okay, that will do me for now with that one.
So I don't want to add anything to that side. Now this one is where we do the kind of watercolour effect and just let with the water soluble pencils and let that drip down the page. I think I might actually just leave that one as it is. That will make quite a nice writing space and it's really delicate. So I'm going to leave that one alone. Okay, for this one, I think I might add a bit of stenciling with watercolour on the back. I've got these leaf, my leafy trail stencil from my product range. And I'm not going to do it all over the page or even slightly precisely. I would use a finer brush if I wanted to get this precise. But I'm just going to hold that stencil down flat and really quickly and lightly kind of press the paint through that stencil so that hopefully we get a kind of hint of the shape. You can get reasonably precise stencilings with watercolours if you really take your time, limit how much paint you put on your brush. But I really just want some patterns on the background. And I think then I'm going to add a bit in that kind of ready colour as well. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up some of this one and just add a few of the leaves in with this as well. So I'm expecting this to not be precise but we'll definitely have some pretty marks on the background of our page. Okay, I think that will just about do us with that. Okay, I really like that. Nice and simple. Just some lovely splashes of colour on there. Okay, that one I'm really happy with. I don't think I want to add anything else to that. So then again, I've got one plain background still here. And then this is the one I wanted to come back to. I'm just going to give that a quick dry first of all. So to finish these last two off, I'm going to try and get a print Put some watercolour on one and actually print it onto both of the pages so that it won't cover all of it but hopefully we'll just have some a kind of interesting look on there. I was also asked how many pages I've got. I've got by the end of this I'll have 12 completed pages Anything between about 12 and 20 will be fine because 12 when they're folded over is already going to be quite a lot when you think of the front and the back. So if my math is right, I've got 12 sheets, a double it for front and back of both sides, 24, and then they'll be folded in half. So it's already going to give us 48 pages. So it's going to be quite a lot and I may even not use all of them. I've got some others that I've done for other projects in the past that I might swap in, but probably not. But I may save a couple for doing for collage and art journaling, which I may well film a quick one of as well. Just see if you've got any spare pages left over. It might give you some fun ideas of things you can do with them. 
So I'm moving really quickly with this, just trying to get a nice big kind of splodge of paint on my page. What I'm going to do is see whether I can transfer any of that onto this page. So I'm just going to press that down. We'll just see what we've got. Okay, I really like that. I think that's going to be really fun and interesting. I might try and transfer a little bit more of that really wet paint down here. Okay, I think I'm going to leave those exactly as they are. I really like that. I really hope you've enjoyed this. It's just given you some more ideas for how you can finish decorating those pages. I did say I'd just share with you quickly before I go what I'm going to be using for my cover. So what I think I'm going to be using is some mixed media paper. I've got some Claire Fontaine paper here. Um, but any kind of cardstock would be fine or things like I've made journal covers using cereal boxes. So don't feel you need to go and get anything in particular. If you decide to use something like a cereal box, it would be worth putting a layer of white gesso on it before next week so that we can add. So we can start decorating the cover and hopefully the pattern's not going to show through too much. And for binding, I'm thinking of using this multicoloured ribbon. I have got plenty of other threads and proper book binding threads, but I'm thinking because this is a journal of joy that this would just fit in perfectly. So you're going to need something to pierce some holes in your pages and cover and a needle for the binding. I'm going to make it really simple. So we'll cover that next week. But I just wanted to let you know kind of what sort of things going to be using. But if you've got some embroidery thread, cottons, twine, anything like that will be fine. So I really hope you enjoyed that. If you're on Instagram, please do tag me in as at Journal With Purpose. I'd love to see how you're getting on. As always, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's joined me over on Patreon. Well, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you're doing really well. I look forward to speaking with you really soon in my next video.